well, coming up at the UCI Claire Trevor School of the Arts at the Claire Trevor Theater, this is a very interesting production called Mrs. Packard. And today we have on the uh, director of Mrs. Packard, Melissa Livingston. Nice to see you, Melissa. Hi. Good morning. And then back with us uh, from about a year ago, Jennifer Holcomb. She is playing the role of Elizabeth Packard, right? Hi, I am. Nice to see you both. Good to see you too. So, uh, Jennifer, tell me kind of the backstory of this. I, I read the synopsis and very, very interesting story. And of course, you look at the graphic right here, and right, right away, when I first looked at that, I'm going, oh, is this kind of uh, some evil monster movie or something <laughs> like this? Uh, you know, and they're, they're in the dungeon type thing. In some ways it is, right? I mean, <laughs> yes. tell us about it. In some ways it is. Um, when I first started looking for scripts for my thesis, I, one, wanted a female writer, and I started looking for stories about American women that I didn't know um, their story or mm -hmm. didn't know the history of. And I came across the script, and this tells the story of Elizabeth Packard. She was put into an insane asylum by her husband with mm -hmm. no other proof of her insanity except for his word. Um, mm -hmm. And she was imprisoned there for three years and fought her way out. And the play takes place um, over the course of the three years um, that she was in the insane asylum and uh, flashes back and forth in time to the to the trial that ultimately set her free. And this was based on a true story? This is based on a true story. Um, it's, uh, Elizabeth Packard was an American woman and this all happened in the 1860s here mm -hmm. in America um, when it was completely legal for husbands to put their wives into an insane asylum if they disagreed right. with them or, or any reason they saw fit. Yeah, that's, that's very true. So um, Jennifer, tell me about what you, attracted you to this, uh, to this character. Gosh, um, similar to Melissa, I, I got really excited to hear the story of a woman from American history that I'd never heard before. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really, it's a pretty shocking story. Yeah. Um, and she, Elizabeth Packard, wrote so many books about her experience. Oh, okay. And so I had the pleasure of getting to read a few of her books and really get into um, understanding the specificity of what was happening to her and even the specifics of what was going on in the asylum during her time there. Mm -hmm. So she documented most of her time and many of her experiences and many of them were violent, many of them, um, though she had some happy moments, it was still really interesting to see the relationships that were developed between not only fellow inmates but also some of the uh, attendants and some of the doctors and even the superintendent. So much of the story in our production actually relies on the relationship between her and the superintendent at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a fascinating relationship. Um, but overall, I think it's just, it's a really important story to be telling, especially in today's political climate um, and for, you know, the, the continuous search for equality uh, in America as well as around the world for gender equality. So I think it's um, it's a very topical story. <laughs> and uh, Melissa, has this uh, th is this the first time UCI has taken this production on? Because I haven't heard of it before. Yes, um, it's not a world premiere. It has been produced before. It was okay. written um, in 2007. Um, but it is the first time that UCI will be doing the production. Um, and it hasn't been produced um, as often as a lot of other productions have. Um, but it's very important and I think very relevant to our world today. Um, now, looking at this, uh, being that it was 1860, it was on really uh, getting towards the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Did that play a role in it? I mean, what was it, as, as you research this character, uh, you know, reading the synopsis, it's just because um, the, uh, it was a reverend, right, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. put his wife in an insane, insane asylum for liberal beliefs. Who knows what was liberal back then? Um, yes, and, and that's very well documented. Yeah. Um, her husband was a Calvinist minister, okay. and Elizabeth's um, beliefs religiously had become more liberal. She started uh, um, worshiping with the Methodists mm -hmm. um, and taking on um, a move away from uh, the more Puritan beliefs that right. this were first okay. part of this country. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's interesting because the Great Awakening, uh, the second movement of the Great Awakening was when a lot of um, other religions were coming about in the country and they were moving west. 
Mm -hmm. And this all happened in Illinois. And so her liberal beliefs weren't necessarily as liberal as what we would believe liberal beliefs <laughs> right. to be today. Right. We would still consider her beliefs to be relatively conservative. Yeah. Um, but to the makeup of the, of the Christian community at the time, mm -hmm. um, she was considered to be very liberal in her beliefs. Yeah, and it, like you said, liberal back then isn't what we think of now, but that was very, very common. And um, Jennifer is, is probably, is, is you uh, uh, looked onto this character that if you kind of went outside the box, outside the lines a little bit, especially when it came to the religion of your community, mm -hmm. uh, this, um, you know, this was not uncommon. No, absolutely not. And that's part of, uh, the challenge as an actor is that there are same, some things that have been written into the script that weren't necessarily specific to the life of Elizabeth Packer, yeah. so they don't necessarily completely align up with her books and her, um, her detailed events of what happened in her life. However, part of Emily Mann's writing is that she's actually written this mm -hmm. to be slightly more the story of many women at that time. Okay. So despite the fact that most of it is very historically accurate to Elizabeth Packard's life, there's still many moments in the show that are slightly heightened for the purpose of telling multiple women's mm -hmm. stories from that period of history. Now, does the play take place during that three years, or do you kind of show what leads up to the event of her kind of going in? In other words, is there somebody playing the role of the reverend in this? Is the reverend seen in this? Yes, the play takes place from the very first day that Elizabeth went into the asylum. Okay. Um, and then also flashes back and forth in time to the trial over her sanity that took place three years later. So we do meet her husband and the doctor in the asylum and several of the women. There's also a lot of people from the community who testified and the testimony in the courtroom scenes is actually taken from almost word for oh, word wow. from mm -hmm. the transcripts of the, the actual case um, that was um, very interesting. The decided wow. um, So it is over these three years, um, but we do meet uh, all of the players in our life. Yeah. In and, that time. and Jennifer, let me ask you: at the, you know, obviously you researched this character. Mm -hmm. Is what Mrs. Packard went through? Mm -hmm. Did it make a change? Oh, certainly. And did um, that change take place around then, or it took a while, or after? You know, Her story got out decades later. Sure, um, I th I think it's one of the things that we we talk about in the actual show. At the very end of the show, it discusses mm -hmm. very briefly um, some of the things, some of the ways in which her behavior and her story changed all of America, um, because it actually talks about how she, her legislation and her basically writing to the government to change the state of Illinois's uh, laws mm -hmm. and legislature eventually changed, what was it, 35 bills, 36 34. bills? 34. 34 wow. bills. Wow. Yeah, and, um, and at that time, women, married women, were quite literally considered non-entities mm -hmm. by the law. Right, And right. so this began the change to, uh, you know, as well as with the, like, the movement for women wanting to vote, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That's, she even discusses that briefly of like, despite the fact that she has very conservative values for that time, right. she even says, I'm beginning to think very much about women who want to vote. Yeah. <laughs> so we can start to see her change and her beginning of um, understanding the, the movement forward that is necessary for women in the country. Right. Um, and she really did make a very huge impact. Now, Melissa, you were both of your students. Are you? Yes. So is this your first directing? This is my first directing on the main stage at UCI. Okay. I'm actually in my final year, and so this will be the um, eighth production that I've directed wow. while being there. Um, yes. Very nice. <laughs> and she's being modest. That's just in the program alone. She's directed many, many years before that, so she's very experienced. That's great. And so this is sort of your, uh, your main kind of uh, thing that you're doing during your last few months. Yes, this is yeah. my thesis. So this okay, is sort of taking thesis, yeah. everything that I've learned at, well, in my three years at UCI and putting it together to uh, showcase in one Being a thesis, production. do you have to write? Or do you have to write it all out? Or is this your thesis? Um, well, in a 97-page script, my analysis for the play okay. was 68 pages long. So okay. um, that's just my analysis and beginning of my research. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer, this is your last three, few months there? It is. I'm in my final year of the MFA acting program, so this is this is my last big role on the main stage, which is 
kind of crazy to think yeah. about. So after this, we have our showcase um, where we showcase in New York and LA. But besides that, this is the last time you'll see me. Very good. Do you have to wear the? I don't have to wear that. <laughs> well, I don't know what you call that, but yeah. all right. Fortunately, no. <laughs> well, uh, this production is taking place February 3rd to the 11th, and it's at the Claire Trevor Theater. Am I right? The actual Claire Trevor yes, Theater. It is. So if you're interested uh, for tickets, you can go to arts.uci.edu forward slash tickets. And uh, there's the other one, arts.uci.edu slash Laguna. And if you do that one, you'll get, uh, I think it's like a 20% discount on tickets. Uh, the uh, number is 949-824-2787. So check it out. It should be a very interesting production. But it sounds like at the end, kind of an enlightening production as well. So. Yeah, yes. very good. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Nice to have you back on. Hope to see you good again see you in yeah. some form, maybe uh, doing something else with another production company. Sure. Would be great. Be All right, we'll Thank be right you. back. It's it.